At dawn's early morning light Monday, October 2, heavily armed and armored police of the elite Texas Rangers assembled around their commanders for a final mission briefing on the Rio Grande border with Mexico. The unusual mission? To invade and occupy the 170-acre Fronton Island in the Rio Grande, near the village of Fronton and town of Roma, made locally notorious as a Mexican cartel hub for smuggling drugs and immigrants north, and weapons and cash back, and for worse things. Leaders of the operation warned the fidgety men of Texas Department of Public Safety and assigned National Guard that this one was riskier than most. We have blood on site in case uh, we do need it. Um, in case of uh, we do get uh, and someone is shot or something, go ahead and uh, work your tactics, get off the X, L8 buddy eight, and uh, we'll do the medical evac. So let's keep a close eye on those structures that are up there that have that height advantage on us. We have not seen people in there yet, but we know that that's what they're used for. So, by prior agreement. Mexican federales had supposedly secured the other side that day, but Texas commanders told the men some Mexican soldiers were corrupted and to take no comfort in any promise of prevention this day. When the invasion pep talk ended and the sun was spreading orange rays of light, it was on. They boarded convoys of roaring all-terrain vehicles and invaded Fronton Island. This was just the beginning to make way for a massive brush clearing operation next that will denude the island of most vegetation. This will go on for some weeks. Texas Department of Public Safety spokesman Chris Olivares explains. And what's the idea behind clearing all the brush? Uh, to have more visibility, mm -hmm. to have better visibility. Yep. Right now you can see they have an elevation we're, we're lower than Mexico, so obviously we're at a disadvantage. So we want to clear the brush. That we have a more tactical advantage um, against them. And then we'll have National Guard posted here. We'll have Constantino wire. It is actually part of a broader campaign of river island seizures that began in 2023. Those seizures were mainly to deny their use as cover for illegal immigrant crossings. But this one is different because not just immigrants use this island. Heavily armed cartel operatives use it as a major sanctuary and to traffic drugs. The other side is lined with clearly marked cartel buildings, and everyone over there is heavily armed. Here, a large barn-like warehouse just across from the island bears the Cartel del Noreste ownership signature, CDN. Other nearby buildings like this one, pocked by bullet holes, show the name of the rival Gulf Cartel. In this volatile environment, Texas will, for the first time, have to occupy and fortify the island in a way that protects Texas police and guardsmen from taking fire, which could happen at any time, no matter what Mexican security forces promise. But why this island and these cartels? The answers are also unique. The Gulf Cartel and Cartel del Noreste have held violent reign in this part of South Texas because, long ago, both Mexico and the U.S. forgot who even owned Fronton Island. Without diplomatic permission to operate on it, the law enforcement and military of both countries shied away from risking diplomatic offense to the other. That left the 170 acres to the cartels and spiked its criminal real estate value. No, I don't know what Mexico claims. Uh, I don't know if they're claiming ownership of that property. Uh, as far as the state, it's always been in question. Uh, and as far as the Border Patrol is concerned, with my experience there, uh, it was always a, you know, uh, let's not get on there and find out. Uh, you know, because we were not sure. Uh, and if, if, we happen to come upon something we shouldn't have or of interest. Uh, the optics of that whole thing might have asked or opened up a big old Pandora's box of holy moly. The ownership ambiguity allowed the island to be used as a haven for cartel operatives fleeing Mexican military crackdowns or when American law enforcement chased them south. 
The island is used as a weapons cache for guns and ammunition, recently found in a bag on the island. In it was an explosive. The island also was valuable because cartel scouts could easily monitor the only paved road that U.S. police could drive into the village of Fronton from the nearest highway. So cartels could easily time their loads for movement north, a highly valuable attribute. Gunmen not only jealously guarded and fought over the island, but lost any reluctance to shoot at police officers and each other, as they did in early October. In November 2016, gunmen on the island opened fire on DPS troopers surveilling them, wounding one in an ensuing gun battle. In 2019, someone fired more than 50 rounds at a patrolling Border Patrol boat, riddling it but miraculously wounding no one. Fatal shootings and body discoveries are not uncommon on the Fronton area stretch of river. The people of Riverfront Fronton have lived in a state of cowering fear as drug traffickers like these men, recently caught on a stationary game camera on the island, cross back and forth into town moving drugs and guns with impunity. This 80-year-old lifelong Fronton resident whose fence had just been torn open by a marijuana trafficker who crashed into it during a police chase, said he hasn't gone near his river neighbor's property 200 yards away in 30 years. And uh, tell me why, why do you not go? It's just right over here. I'm afraid. But what really catalyzes the Texas decision to occupy the island is the perception that it's all gotten far worse since Border Patrol agents are redeployed elsewhere to process overwhelming numbers of immigrants. That's according to Texas Department of Public Safety's Regional Director, Victor Escalon. The federal government, you know, they're not able to cover all these areas and provide the safety, the security for landowners that are in Texas. Bottom line. Because when you have have a landowner telling you, hey man, I'm out here feeding my cows, and I see three men coming across with a backpack and they're armed. Why do I have to live like that? Well, this is the answer. And I call it being proactive. So, And because the cartels in the area are viciously battling one another after moving into the lucrative business of moving immigrants. Recently, these immigrants who poured through the Fronton area said they paid $9,000 for one parent and one child to cross. $15,000 for this family of three, which paid half up front and owes the rest. First, though, the Texas Land Commissioner's Office had to survey and determine that all of the island belonged to Texas. That set the stage for Monday's operation and for everything that will happen here in the coming months. Not everyone, though, is optimistic that the Texas effort and expense of clearing the island and defending it under constant physical threat will end the area's problems. Other large, thickly vegetated islands are situated across from Fronton, too. All it's going to do is do away with an island. Uh, I think they they can still move whatever commodity they want to get north or south. It's going to be, you know, a speed bump for them, I think, in my opinion. Because they have the resources, they have the money, they have the time, uh, they're not unionized. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they don't have regular work hours. They're not shift workers. At the end of this first day of operations, National Guard engineers were already clearing the first roads in, and Texas forces planted the state flag. But the flag planting was really much more of a beginning than an end, as any occupation of contested territory usually turns out to be. I'm Todd Bensman with the Center for Immigration Studies in Fronton, Texas.